seamless rest talk. Originally, I was supposed to present it with Zach, but unfortunately, he is indisposed right now, so I'll be dancing on the stage alone. And yeah, we thought we'd just, you know, end at this line and take you to take the rest of the day, but let's do something else instead. Uh, small note, uh, as of Magnolia 5.4, we are releasing the version 2 of the REST API. It has only one tiny little change in the commands endpoint, and it allows you to configure the fields from the context in the command execution that you want to include in the response. So you can return pretty much anything you want from the command, whatever it did or learned during its execution, and you can send it in the JSON array in the response. Hopefully that will make it more useful for you. Now, Magnolia is a REST server. How many of you know that Magnolia is a REST server? How many of you use any of the Magnolia REST services which are there out of the box? Okay, there are some raised hands, that's good. So let's do it very quickly. There are a number of REST endpoints that you can use. We keep adding more, like this one for cache. You see, uh, yesterday you have, hopefully some of you have seen the cache browser, and you see that there were actually, what, two, four, six methods only which we needed in there to make it all work. So you see there is not much that you need to expose usually to make the things work if you design it right. We also keep adding extra endpoints for special things, like this one for the beacons. And sometimes we do funny things, like here, Mika and Espen were presenting, that was in January in Munich at Amplify and Grid Create. They were showing how they expose the messages endpoint in Magnolia and build the custom AngularJS Messenger app. It was a really cool use case uh, example showing how you can very easily use that API and build something custom on top of it. I hope we have it recorded somewhere. If not, maybe we can ask them to redo the presentation and record it again. And also, the other thing, and that's what I will be talking about today, is Magnolia is a REST client, or can act as a REST client. I don't know whether any of you have tried to use or to consume any REST services from within Magnolia, be it from templates, from components, from, I don't know, UI elements. Did you? Anybody? Consuming any REST services in Magnolia? Two, four, five, six, okay, seven, eight. Very good, yeah, there are some hands. So internally, we use it quite a lot. We use it, for example, for the smarter commerce integration there with all the 50 or so calls that ABM exposes for us. We do it in other integrations like those, or we do it actually pretty much in every integration that we do. If there is a REST service that we can consume, this is a preferred way ho of how to integrate Magnolia with the external service. And because we do it a lot, well, first, we found it's very easy, but we also found some other things. So we can expose those external systems through Magnolia and let users forget completely that there is actually some external system, that there is some other UI. We don't have to take their UI paradigms or orientation or uh, whatever way how they choose to organize the content and expose. We can expose it in Magnolia way and let people feel at home when working with that other content. We can provide nicer UI in quite few cases. Boris made the funny comment yesterday about IBM user interfaces. That's where it's very apt. I will not repeat it in case somebody doesn't like me afterwards then. And also, well, it's hip and cool and everybody likes the rest, right? Everybody is using it. It's becoming ubiquitous. It, it's becoming like common, a normal common thing that everybody does. You want to integrate something, let's do it over the rest. And yeah, everybody does it. So a few examples, you can very easily test the rest services, those in Magnolia or, or elsewhere. Ah, can't talk anymore. Uh, via the command line interface, so here, we are just uh, querying the e or getting the first event from this custom event endpoint. Uh, or we can create a property, like here I'm returning the title for the travel website for the new demo. Or here I'm actually creating a new version of the page, so I can even emulate from outside the actions which normally are done in Magnolia. All the actions which are based on the command action or which are executing commands in behind, in behind the scene, 
You can very easily execute them through the rest as well. That's why we have this commands endpoint. And in this case, with the version 2 API, you could also configure it internally so that command endpoint would return you the number of the version which it actually created. Not that it just executed, but you would also know what's the new version. And we can also build some custom endpoints. And what else we can do? Yeah, OK, fine. So. What I will do, actually, I will try something funny. And for that, I need to create a Magnolia module. Hopefully, that's going to be very quick. I run the archetype. If you haven't used the archetype, know that you can. And it's a very easy way to generate the things. So group ID, press or rest. Let's have some fun, right? Artifact ID, rest fun. 1.0, it's OK. Package is OK. Magnolia version, let's use 5.4 snapshot, because that's what I have locally. Uh, module class, well, we don't really care, because we will not use it. But let's call it this. And yes. So now we have a module. We have some rest fun module here. Nothing much to see, right? Uh, there will be one extra thing which I will do. And I will copy my jrebel config in there. And now I need to do some changes in the POM. So first is the Java version. Hopefully, until the next presentation, somebody will fix it and change it to version 7 out of the box. And I need to add the dependencies. We will be doing something with the rest. So I need some rest dependencies. And those I have here. So it's not much. Oops. And yeah, that's exactly what happens during the demos, right? Let's do it again. Java version 2.7. And the dependencies. And don't forget to switch it to the insert mode. So this is what we have. We have just the REST client. We have the REST easy client. That's what we will be using through. Let's see if that builds. And let's do it in the offline mode. And yes, OK, so I have nearly successfully built the Magnolia module. Now I just put it in the IDE. So let me import that module. And this is the one I want. And I want to add it in the test set. So now I have here my Magnolia module. You see it contains pretty much nothing except that one class which was generated. So what we will do is we will now generate some interface for the REST service. Let's call it ICNDB service. Any of you knows ICNDB REST service? No? OK. So let's have some fun. It's a very simple service. It exposes few very simple calls, which are excellent for the test now. We'll add some imports, so I don't have to do them manually. And I will create the public method that returns the JSON node, and it's called get. And this method is actually the get method. It works on a certain path that is, if I remember correctly, slash type slash operation. And it will consume something which is called media types json where you are here so this is what it consumes now i have a typo there thanks for telling me if i do any typos any errors and you know it please shout tell me okay what what's wrong in path Ah, yeah, true. Thank you very much. You need to shout louder. I'm also deaf, among other things. So we add the path param, which is type. And surprisingly, it's a string type. We add another path param, uh, operation. I could have also copy-pasted those, but I thought it's more funny if I do the mistakes here. Maybe not. Operation. And we add some query params. There, uh, which would be, say, the first name, if I can 
string first and another one. I promise it's the last one, which would be a last name. Again, it's a string and we call it last, doesn't really matter what we call it, right? So this way I could keep adding the things, but I'm lazy, so let me cheat a little bit. I add a few more methods and I need to do one more thing for the stuff to build. I need to provide some meaningful Java doc. Just this. Okay, let's build it again. And hopefully we have a success because I don't have much time. Yes. Five, four. Let me copy it to my instance. Now we just start it up. And now we have a few seconds before the instance starts. So what will happen is we build this module with the interface. You see there is no Java class, there is nothing. I started from scratch. There is just this one interface which is annotated. The rest client module and the rest easy client will take care of the rest of the things. I will have my service already exposed and ready to be used inside of Magnolia and I will demonstrate that. Uh, and we will then also demonstrate how you can very easily such a services if somebody exposes them for you, how you can use them in the template or possibly how you can use them also when building the UI elements for Magnolia apps. So it's running. I hope that there is just uh, sessions which I didn't delete from before. So let me start the Magnolia. Yes, it wants to install the module. That's a good sign. And now I have started the Magnolia. And it's loading, loading, loading. This is the reloading of the filter chain and reinitializing all the register and everything after this the installation and now we get in. So now what I need to do is I need to actually configure the REST client, right? So I go in my module and I do something crazy here. I say the client name would be ICNDB REST client and the base URL for that is HTTP api.icndb.com. Now, let's verify if everything is correct. If you want to see how the definition looks like, that's actually the definition which is then picked up by our REST client module, and it ends up in the REST client registry, and we do all the wiring and binding and all the other things behind the scene. So you can start this thing, which is called the REST client app. And in the REST client app, if I did everything correctly, and it seems I did, I should already see my client. Now I can tell it that I want to run it against this interface. Presso REST fun ICNDB service. The reason why it's done this way is that you can have multiple interfaces. You might want to expose some for read-only access, some which will have methods for the write access, or you might want to split among the other things. And look, it already found all those three methods which I have created. Not only that, it also led me to try to use them. So let's see the type of service I want is jokes. Operation is random. And since Zach is not here, I will abuse his name. Ransom, yeah, maybe that would work as well and we'll ask him the ransom, right? Random. Random. Thank you very much for your eyes. And look what do we know. Zagran can drink an entire gallon of milk in 37 seconds. Well, I enter, certainly can't. So this is how you can use it, how you can verify very easily. You see, it was just few lines. Most of the time was the generating the module and starting up Magnolia. But the, the really easy thing was I didn't need any code. I just wrote that interface, annotated it a little bit. I registered the base URL for the service, I could have multiple of those services, staging, production, etc. And then I can very easily test all the methods which I have in my interface against that to verify that they are working. Now, the other thing which I want to show you right now is that maybe we want to use it somewhere in the pages, right? So I go to our beautiful travel demo, and in there, I will go to the contact page. You will notice I already added their component for the contacts, and I already added there the favorite joke. I set the ID for that joke inside of the component, so I don't have to do it via UI. 
And what I need to do, I want to expose that in the template. Now, how can I do it? Do I need to restart? Do I need to do some Java development? Well, actually not. If I'm fortunate enough, I should be able oopsie, to open everything in here and look at my contacts and just replace this piece of the code with something uh, which we exposed for you in Magnolia 5.4 and which is called the rest functions. And again, I'm lazy, so I'm not going to type it in. I just copy it. But you see, this is a call to the rest functions. We do the rest call. Against uh, this ICNDB REST client, we use the ICNDB service interface. We call the get ID method as the one of those which I just copied in to make it easy. So it's this one. And the parameter we provide there is coming from the given contact. So his favorite joke, whatever was configured there, that was this number 140, whatever. So I save it. And let's see if it was as simple, and I can already consume that service here. And voila, you see, Chuck Norris ordered the Big Mac at Barker King and got one. Wow. I wouldn't thought that Leonardo is fun of that joke, but whatever. So you can do it. Now, if you feel like this is getting too difficult, you are free to leave. If you want to stay, what we will try to do now is we will try to take that very same service and expose it to the editors. So as an editor, I can actually go, I can open the contacts, I can select my contact, and instead of me hacking it somewhere in the back end, you would have a field here where you can select the favorite joke for every person there. So if you are up for next five, 10 minutes, and you enjoy me failing to write some code. This is what will happen. So first, again, we will need to edit the POM and add there some extra dependencies for working with the UI. And OK, insert first, not the same mistake twice. Again, me lazy, so I will actually add those dependencies. I have them prepared here. No, that doesn't look right, right? Let's try again, insert. Ah, well, 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 I need the glasses. And that would be mode uh, dependencies. Is that the one? Yes, it is one. Ah. So you see, I'm adding the API, I'm adding the form, I'm adding the framework. I should not need anything more. Let's go back to here. I need to tell Eclipse what I did. So let's refresh. And now we will create a new class. And this class would be, let's call it fav, if I can type, favorite joke uh, select field factory. We will just extend the existing one. We have one select field factory, this one. That's what I want. So this is what I will use before I forget some javadoc. I will need some definition for my factory. Me being lazy again, I just copy the definition in here. Yes, I need to import this field. I need to unfortunately import this one as well. And I will need to generate the constructor. We want to annotate that constructor so we don't have to do anything manually. I will be working with the REST client uh, registry to get the REST client. So I will actually inject the REST client registry as well so I don't have to do anything about it. Registry, don't have to wonder where to get it or how or what. So this registry equals uh, is three, thank you very much. And yes, create a field for me. So this is a skeleton of the code I need. And now the only thing I actually want to override in that class is this method, which gives me the select field options. We will definitively not call the supper. We don't want to do it manually. Instead, we will create the new list of such a field. We will fill them in dynamically, and we will return that. So I get the registry, uh, get 
REST client. Name of our REST client is ICNDB REST client, if I can remember correctly. So that's my client. From the client, I, okay, there is an exception. Thank you very much. Surrounded the try catch. Now, just for this presentation, I will deal with it the way of telling the user what I did. And so what I need now is from the client, I want to get the service. There is a client service. No, there isn't. Because I, it's the REST easy client, so I need to actually cast it into such, not into the generic one. That's the generics in the registry, which probably we could take care of somehow. Somewhere, somebody take the message, take the note. And that was ICNDB service, what I wanted, right? So that's the service I want. Oops, service equals still bear with me, and so all I want now is just have a for loop where I will take the joke that it returns me, I will call the service, and there is method all, thank you, we will exclude the explicit jokes, not to offend anybody in the room, we will want to get the path, that's value, and that's pretty much it, right? Yes, we need the variable. So now, again, me lazy, copying code over. Let's see how many copy-paste errors I can make by the end of the talk. Uh, so now I need to fill in the label, that should be easy. So I have my joke, and from there I want to get a path to the actual joke. If you don't remember the elements or what you are setting here, it's very easy for you to go back to the REST client, which is somewhere here. And you can see those things in the response, so I still have it pre-filled here. And so you see there is a value, inside of the value there is a joke, there is an ID, so that, that's actually what I'm filling in. You might see I have the path here, that's the value to each of the jokes. Now I'm getting the path joke, I'm getting it as text. And because it might be long, I probably want to abbreviate it a little bit, right? So let's make it shorter. I don't know, 100 characters should be enough. And of course, we want to set the value for it, which is actually the ID that we want. So that's the joke path and ID and as text again. And if I did everything right, there is no error. Wow, surprisingly. So that should be enough for what I did. Remember, I connected that before via JRebel. So if everything works correctly, I have that class already available in here. So what I will actually do, I will now register my custom field and I will not because I just reloaded things. Yeah. Jerable and Jews don't really like each other sometimes. So, and there is the famous demo effect, right? When you need something, it doesn't work. So, what we need now is the field types. Field types, please correct me if I type it wrong. We want the fuff joke. That's what we register, and for this we need to register definition class. I'm taking some shortcuts, normally you would be creating the nodes, so please don't hold it against me. And what I want here is this. So what I end up with is this definition for the favorite joke, and I will also need to add there another property, which is a factory class which conveniently is exactly the same class without the definition at the end, right? So I have my registration of the field, and now I just need to find some victim where I can use it. That will be a contact module today. And if I can click through. So we, here we have the personal information, and inside of the personal information, we will add another field. We will call it joke. We will say this is a favorite joke, 
And for the field type, we select our newly registered field type. Let's say we make it mandatory for everybody. So now we have a field. I just move it just after the last name. That's important, right? And now let's have a look if we can go in the contacts app and we can change the favorite joke for our friend Leonardo. If I did everything right, and it seems like we have it. You see, I even get the pre-selected one, which I hard-coded there before. And let's say, I don't know, Chuck Norris can run faster than Chuck Norris watches it, right? I save it, and the ultimate test, will I see it in the page? I hope I did it enough times to be sure that it happens. The moment of surprise, and yes, we now have the different ID, and we also see that we were able to change the way. So now we have completed the cycle. We exposed the rest or added the rest service inside of Magnolia, allowed everybody on the front end to consume it if they don't need any UI elements. If they need the UI elements within 20 minutes or so, we managed to also put in there the UI element which consumes the REST service and exposes it for the editors to be used as well. Sometimes you might want to consume the REST services using other frameworks like AngularJS or anything else directly in the client app. Sometimes when you need this kind of interaction for the editors, it's not possible. You need to do it on the server side, at least for selection of the IDs. Sometimes those services are like, I don't know, they, are, they belong to your company. They might contain some other sensitive data. You don't want to expose them over the firewall. So they are available only internally. Magnolia allows you to consume them internally, put the results of calls into those services in the pages, and return them back to the users. And with that, I can maybe switch back to the presentation, and we can watch this again for the sake of it. And thank you very much. That's it. Any questions?